I'm going to be reading chapter 9 of the School for Good and Evil. So, the chapter 9, um, the picture looks like that. Um, so, let's start reading. And the chapter 9 is called The 100% Talent Show. Sophie Blucher Beatrix had set the fire to get headdresser's attention. No doubt he rescued her from the blazing tower, kissed her as the goods burned, and had already set their wedding date. Sophie came up with this theory because this was what she had planned to do at lunch. Instead, classes were canceled the next day too, leaving her marooned in a room with three murderers. She stared at the iron plate on her bed, gobbled with soggy gruel and pig's feet. After three days of starvation, she knows she had to eat whatever ghastly lunch school sent up. But this was worse than ghastly. This was peasant food. She flung her pl plate out the window. You don't know where I might find cucumbers. You don't know where I might find cucumbers in this place, Sophie said, turning. Hester scowled across the room. The goose. The goose. How'd you do it? For the last time, Hester, I don't know, Sophie said, stomach rumbling. It promised to help me switch schools, but it lied. Maybe it went bad after laying so many eggs. Do you know of a garden nearby with some alfalfa or wheatgrass for you talked to it? Hester blurted, mouth full of oozing pig's foot. For the last time, Hester, I don't know, Sophie said, stomach rumbling. It, oh, sorry, um, well, not exactly, Sophie said, nauseous, but I could hear its thoughts. Unlike you, princesses can talk to animals. But not hear the thoughts, said Dot, blurple, blurping gruel that looked chocolate, that looked chocolate flavored. For that, your soul has to be a hun hundred percent pure. There, proof. I'm a hundred percent good, said Sophie, relieved. Or hundred percent evil, Hester, ret Hester retorted. It depends on if we believe you or if we believe this. Stimps, the robes, the goose, and that wave monster. Sophie go goggled at, um, at her and burst into snig snickers. Sniggers. 100% evil? Me? That's preposterous. That's lunacy. That's impressive, Anna Dohemes. Even Hester's but stared a rat or two, and here we all thought you were incompetent. Hester sneered at Sophie. When you were just a snake in sheep's, when you were just a, a snake in sheep's clothing. Sophie tried to stop giggling, but couldn't. But she, bet she has a special talent that blows ours away, said Dot, munching what looked to be a tiny chocolate foot. I don't understand, Sophie snickered. Where does all the chocolate come from? What is it? Aunt Anna Delphis, what's your talent? Night vision, invisibility, telepathy, fangs filled with poison? I don't care what it is, Hester snarled. She can't beat my talent, no matter how villainous she is. Sophie laughed so hard now she was weeping. You listen to me, Hester screeched, first curling around her plate, fist, fist curling around her plate. This is my school. Keep your crum, keep your crummy, keep keep your crummy school. Sophie hooted. I'm class captain. Hester roared. I don't doubt it, and no reader is going to get in my way. Are all villains this funny? Hester let out a mad cackle and flung her pit plate at Sophie who dove just in time to see it tomahawk into the wanted poster on the wall and slice, and slice off Robin's head. Sophie stopped laughing. She peeked over the scorched bed at Hester, silhouetted against the open door, black as death. For a second, Sophie thought her tattoo moved. 
Watch out which Hester spat and slammed the door. Sophia looked down at her shaking fingers, and here we thought she'd fail. Don't Dot chimed behind her. Agatha knew it had to be bad if they let a wolf take her. After the fire, she was locked in her room for two days. Allowed, allowed out only to use the toilet and accept meals of raw vegetables and prune juice from scowling fairies. Finally, after lunch on the third day, the white wolf came and took her away, digging claws into her singed pink sleeve. She pulled her, he pulled her past the stair room girls, past the glowering elders and teachers who couldn't even meet her eyes. Agatha found, fought back to him. She already had two failing rings. Inciting an animal stampede and setting the school on fire had earned her a third. All she had to do was pretend to be good for a few days. But she couldn't even manage that. How did she think she could ever last here? Beautiful, pure, vir virtuous. Is, if that was good, then she was 100% evil. Now she would suffer the punishment, and Agatha knew enough about fairy tale punishments, dismemberings, disem disembowelings, boilings, and oil skinnings alive to know her ending would involve both blood and pain. The wolf dragged her through the charity tower, past the bespectacled woodpecker, dabbling in new rankings on the groom room door. Are we going to the schoolmaster, Agatha rasped. The wolf snorted. He dragged her to the room at the end of the hall and knocked once. Come in, said the quiet voice inside. Agatha looked into the wolf wolf's eyes. I don't want to die. For the first time, his sneer softened. I didn't either. He opened the door and pushed her through. Apparently, the fire had finally been brought under control because classes resumed after lunch on the third day, and Sophie found herself in a damp, moldy classroom for special talent. But she could barely focus with her stomach rumbling. Hester was throwing her murderous looks, and Dot whispering to other nevers about their 100% evil bunkmate. It had all gone wrong. She had started the week trying to prove she was a princess. Now everyone was convinced she'd be evil's captain. Special talents was taught by Professor, Professor Sheba Sheeks, the rotund woman with boils on both ebony cheeks. Every villain has a talent, she bellowed in her thick sing-song voice. Pacing the room in a, busly, in a busky red velvet, pointy-shouldered gown. But we must turn your bush into a tree. For the day's challenge, each never had to show off a unique talent to the class. The more potent the challenge, the higher the students ranked. But the first five kids failed to produce anything. With vexed whining, he didn't even know his talent. Is that what you'll tell the schoolmaster at the circus? Professor Sheiks thundered. I don't know my talent, or don't have a talent, or don't like my talent, or want to trade talents with the Udi Queen. She had me till the last bit, they got. Every year, evil loses the circus of talent. She, she Sheila yelled, good sings a song, or waves a sword of white. A sword or wipes their bottom and you have nothing better don't you have pride don't you have shame enough i don't care whether you turn men to stone or turn men to dung you listen to shiva and you'll be number one. Twenty pairs of eyes stared at her which monkey is next she boomed the willful displays continued green skin mona made her lips glow red because every prince is scared of a christmas tree sheba moaned anadil made her rats grow an inch hort sprung a hair from his chest arachne popped her her one eye revin burnt smoke and just when their teacher was completely fed up dot touched her desk and turned it to chocolate mystery solved sophie marveled
I've never seen such a parade of useless. Sorry, my camera shut off. Okay. I've never seen such a parade of uselessness in my life, she gasped. But Hester was next. Leering at Sophie, she gripped the desk with both fists, clench, clenching tighter, tighter, until every vein bulged against her reddening skin. Turns into a watermelon, yawned Sophie, special indeed. Then something moved on Hester's neck, and the class froze. Her tattoo lurched again. Like a painting coming to life, the red skull demon unfurled one wing, then the other, swung its buckhorned head to Sophie, and opened and opened slitting bloodshot eyes. Sophie's heart stopped. I told you to watch out, Hester grinned. The demon, the demon exploded off her skin in full body life and tore towards Sophie, shooting red firebolts at her head. Stunned, she fell backwards to dodge them, knocking a bookcase to the ground. The shoe-sized beast swooped, launched a bolt that ignited her robes, and Sophie rolled over to stamp the flames. Help! Use your talent, in incompetent blonde girl, she remarked, wagging her hips. She, she should sing, Dot quipped. Would kill everyone in the room. Hester circled her demon for a second attack, only to see it snare in the snare in the cobweb sp spiked chandelier. Sophie crawled under the last row, glimpsed a fallen book, an encyclopedia of villains, and ripped through the pages. Banshee, ba Bene, Berserker. Sophie, hurry! Hort screamed. Sophie wheeled to see the winged beast slash through the cobwebs as Hester's eye, Hester's eyes flared across the room. She flipped desperately, took that Cyclops demon. Ten pages of small print. Demons are supernatural beings that come in an astonishing variety of forms, all with different strengths and weaknesses. Sophie swiveled. The demon was five feet away. Your talent, roared Sheba. Sophie threw the book at the demon and missed. With a lethal smile, she held up, she held up a bolt like a dagger. Sheba lunged to intervene. An antidote tripped her. S screeching, the demon aimed at Sophie's face. But as he slung his bolt, Sophie suddenly remembered the one talent all good girls had, friends. She spun to the window and let out a gorgeous whistle for a kind, noble animal to save her life. Black wasps smashed through the window and swarmed the demon on its heels. Hester jolted back as if she'd been stabbed. Sophie's eyes bulged in horror. She whistled again, but now bats stormed in, sinking teeth into the demon as the wasps continued to sing. Sting, the demon crumpled to the floor like burnt moth, like a burnt moth. In her seat, Hester's skin went white and clammy, sucked, sucked of blood. Alarmed, Sophie whistled louder, higher, but then came a cloud of bees, hornets, and locusts, bezaying the foaming creature as Hester violently convulsed. In the corner, Sophie stood paralyzed as screaming villains battered them away from the demon with books and chairs, but the swarm was no mercy. Savaging it until Hester heaved her last breath. Sophie threw herself over the demon, thrust her hands at um Sophie threw herself over the demon, thrust her hands at the swarm. Stop! The swarm went dead still, like scolded children. They whimpered obediently that and fled out the window in a dark cloud, wheezing the wounded demon clawed to Hester and clasped cla collapsed back into her neck. Hester choked and coughed up from brought back from the edge. She gasped at Sophie, flooding with fear. Sophie, don't help her. I didn't mean I wanted a bird or a Hester recoiled from her touch. Princess, call animals. Sophie cried into silence. I'm good. 100%, 100% good. Thank, thank you, Beelzebub. Sophie whirled. Looks like a princess. Act like a pr princess, but a witch. Sheba whooped, wobbling to her feet. Mark my words, my useless one, ones. This one will win the circus crown. For the second time in two challenges, Sophie looked up at the top ranks. Spewing wet spilt 
red smoke above her head. Panicked, she whipped to her schoolmate to appeal, but they were no longer looking at her with con- con- contempt or ridicule. They were looking at her with something else. Respect. Her place as number one villain was getting sure by the minute. Up close, Professor Clarissa Dovey, with her silver bun and rosy face, looked even more comfort- comforting and grandmotherly. Agatha couldn't have wished for a better executioner. I pre- I prefer the schoolmaster to handle these things, Professor Dovey said, flipping papers until a crystal pumpkin paper w- under a crystal pumpkin paperweight. But we all know how he is about his privacy. Finally, she peered up at Agatha. She didn't look comfort comforting anymore. I have a school full of terrified students. Two days of classes to make up. Five hundred animals whose memories must be erased. A classroom wing that has that's been eaten. A treasured menagerie reduced to ash. And a headless gargoyle buried somewhere underneath all this. Do you know why this is? Agatha couldn't get words out of her throat. Because you disobeyed Pollux's simple order, Professor Dovey said, and nearly cost lives in the process. She shamed Agatha with a look and went back to her scrolls. Agatha glanced through the windows at the lakeshore, where Evers were finishing lunches of roast chicken, dolloped with mustard, spinach, and, and gruyere cakes, and flutes of apple cider. And flutes of apple cider. She could see Ted Roach reenacting the menagerie scene for an enthralled audience, sporting his black eye like a badge of honor. Can I say bye to my friend at least, Agatha said, eyes welling. She turned to Professor Dubby before you kill me. That won't be necessary, but I have to see but I have to see her. Professor Dubby looked up. Agatha, you received a first rank for your performance in animal communication, and rightfully so, only a rare talent can make such a wish come to life. And though there are different accounts of what exactly happened on the roof, I would add that any pupil of this school who would risk their life to help a gargoyle, her eyes glistened, and for a moment, so did the silver swan on her dress. Well, that suggests goodness beyond any measure. Agatha stared at her, tongue-tied, but if you disobey any another teacher's direct order, Agatha, I guarantee you will fail. Understood? Agatha nodded in relief. She heard laughter outside and turned to see Tedros's mace kicking around a pillow dummy with twig legs, cold button eyes, and black thorns of hair. An arrow suddenly speared at head, splitting the feathers, spitting feathers everywhere. A second arrow ripped open his heart. The boys stopped laughing and turned. Across the lawn, Tedros threw down his bow and walked away. As for as for your friend, she's doing just fine where she where she is, Professor Dovey said. Thumb thumbing through more scrolls. But you can ask her yourself. She's in your next class. Agatha wasn't listening. Her eyes were still on the dead-eyed scroll, bleeding feathers into the wind. The doll that looked just like her. <laughs> okay, that's the end of chapter 9. And the next chapter is called, uh, the chapter 10 is called Bad Group. So that will be the next chapter that I read. But this chapter is ended, and that's chapter 9. So we're actually not even halfway through. It's supposed to be sort of a lot of chapters. But I like it so far. Yeah. Um, so that's it and then hope i'll see you um and i'll see you in another video bye